What's up YouTube, I'm Mike, and today I'm still sick, <clears throat> but um, I think I might actually be getting better. Uh, for those of you who care, I have been running fever of uh, anywhere between 102.6 and 103.5 for the past four days. Um, I was on the verge of going to the hospital yesterday. Um, because my fever would not drop below 102.6, even with um, <coughs> uh, <coughs> even with Tylenol in my system, and uh, at the advice of uh, an actual doctor on my Discord, I took in a leave on top of the Tylenol, and that was able to bring my fever down uh, back to normal. So um, once I got the fever down, I was able to actually feel. The rest of my body and I clearly have um, some kind of upper respiratory uh, infection or <laughs> virus or something but you guys don't give a shit about that just trying to let you know where I'm at um, today I have another special treat for you guys uh, you everybody seems to have been enjoying the the kind of flashback videos to my uh, my first Trimblone cycle and so I've got one more video to share with you guys and I'm going to cut that in right after this again it was never intended to be shared I probably shouldn't be sharing in all honesty I hope the statute of limitations <laughs> ran out on some of the shit that I'm about to share with you uh, because in week four of my trend cycle I got in a fight at the gym so um, this again, like I said, the point of this uh, series of videos has been able has been to show you what I was actually going through, you know, in my first cycles. I've I've learned to handle this shit a lot better now, and uh, it causes a lot less problems. It's not to say that it causes none, but it causes a lot less problems. And uh, these the the first cycle that I ran was was pretty fucking raw. And so uh, this video that I'm getting ready to, to clip in here uh, goes through the details of the crazy shit that I was getting up to. Um, like really, it was technically like three weeks in. I think I said I was coming up on. Uh, I was getting ready to. I was getting ready to start my fourth week. So whatever you consider that. So um, yeah. So. <laughs> Enjoy this um, again. Hopefully, I'm not getting myself into any trouble admitting any of this shit. Um, but it was it was definitely a roller coaster, and hopefully, it'll give some some of you guys who've maybe never done trend before um, uh, again, like I said, uh, a better view as to just how quickly um, this shit can take hold of you. Um, you saw in the first video how very passive and laid back I was before taking the trend and then here in week four we've got all kinds of shit popping off um, all over town so um, hopefully tomorrow I'll feel be, be feeling better <coughs> better enough to make um, more lengthy videos again I'm hoping I, I, I was able to get some food in today um, so I'm hoping I'm, I'm on the upswing of whatever bullshit disease that I got a hold of so uh, there you have it, man. Uh, like I said, I'm not gonna. I guess I'll cut an intro. Uh, uh, I'll cut an outro separately. So uh, go ahead and play this video. Let you guys see what I was looking like at uh, the end of week four, or excuse me, the beginning of week four on my first ever trend cycle. And at this point, I was taking. Uh, I had bumped the trend up to 250 milligrams a week, I think I said in the video. So trend, 250 a week, start of week four, this is what it looked like. What's up YouTube, I'm Mike. Today I'm going to shoot a quick video to update uh, the progress on the trend blown enanthate cycle. <clears throat> and I'm eating candy again which I don't really concern about, considering this only going to be viewed by me. So, I just started the fourth week, and um, the side effects have definitely come on. 
I have, I can't remember everything that I mentioned in the last video, but I've been chewing my wife's ass out on a regular basis for all kinds of little bullshit that actually seems to have gotten a little bit better this week, maybe, maybe toned down a little bit, but I've definitely been really irritable uh, about a lot of things. I really can't stand anybody's presence. Sometimes even my kids, like my daughter that I love more than anything in the world, tonight she came to my desk and I was trying to print out a return label and she was jabbering away and I caught myself getting really irritated with her being around, which is never the case. Like, I love that little girl and it really was an eye opener just how irritated I got tonight with her presence. I guess the thing that, that well... So a few things have happened over the course of the past week. I got into a fight with my wife. And I attempted to throw a, like, three, like, it's like a five cup glass, like, uh, measuring cup. Like a, a glass measuring cup. And I was going to throw it across the room and smash it against a wall. Because she wouldn't shut up when I told her to shut up. And I thought better of it and then tried to, like, you know, stop mid-thrust. And it just slipped out of my hand and smashed, like, went just down, like, at a 45-degree angle. And shattered all over the floor, all over everywhere. Pieces of glass went flying up. They landed in her top. We, we've been still, like, we've been picking up pieces of glass around this house. For a week. I vacuumed. I swept. I did everything. Tried to pick the shit up. She immediately left the house. Got my daughter left. Went to Walmart. We didn't talk for a minute. I was a little bit paranoid. Whether she might call the cops on me. Because we've had some run-ins in the past. And I'm not supposed to be being violent or aggressive in any way. I'm certainly not supposed to be throwing shit. And so I wasn't really sure... <laughs> just exactly where her head was at when she left there was a definitely a little bit of what I guess you could call trend paranoia for a little while like I started imagining she might be calling the cops or doing calling her mom or whatever but she came right home and um, she actually had a crazy demeanor she was like real passive about it I guess the fact that I had been in the house cleaning it up helped some and we really just kind of put that to bed. Like, that did not start a huge fight. It did not become an ongoing thing, which was nice. So, yeah, that happened. And then things were cool for a few days. My kids went out of town to see their mother. Uh, my boys went to see their mother. And so my wife and I were getting a bunch of little couples time around the house and stuff. We're going shopping together, running around. And... Um, I walk into this Walmart that I go to almost every day now, it seems like. I'm always going to buy meat and stuff to cook. And, you know, when you go into the Walmart, they nag you about wearing a mask. It's not, a, they don't enforce it. They just ask you if you'll wear it. Some of them are nicer than others. Some of them just offer you the mask. Some of them just, you know, ask if you have one. 90% of the time, you just say no. You walk past them, they're totally cool. They don't do anything. There's this one fucking Indian guy... And he's real aggressive with it. Every time I walk in the store, hey, hey, mask, you know, you got to making all kinds of gestures and telling me I got to wear a mask. And used to in the beginning, I kind of just fucked with the guy. You know, like one day I was walking in there and I had a Superman shirt on and he asked me if I was wearing a mask. And I'm like, no, I think I'm Superman. Like Superman wears a cape. He doesn't wear a mask. Like clearly I'm not going to wear a mask. I'm Superman. You know, just fucking trolling the guy. He has no sense of humor. And um, so he sees me in there all the time. And every fucking day, he nags me about this mask. And we've just been out shopping. We walked in the store, and this guy starts hollering at, me, hollering at me about this mask. I just ran over on him, like right over a foot away. And I'm like, no, fuck you. I'm not wearing the fucking mask. You're, I'm in here every fucking day. Every day you ask me to wear the mask. Just leave me the fuck alone. I'm never going to do it. I'm not wearing it. They don't fucking work. Stop fucking hassling me about this fucking mask. And I melt down on this guy like that. 
It was probably worse than that, the way I just did it. And I'm relatively close to him. You know, like, I'm not like completely in his face, but I'm close to him. And so he's just standing there looking at me like I'm a psycho. I finished my little rant. And then I look up and sure fucking enough, there's a cop standing right there looking at me. So I'm like, oh, fuck, here we go. I mean, I didn't break the law, but I was acting like a dickhead. And so I kind of walked by the cop trying to act like nothing happened. And he goes, hey, sir, if it's their policy to wear a mask, you have to wear a mask. My stupid ass gets an attitude with the cop. And I just kind of wheeled on him. And I was like, look, sir, there is no policy about wearing a mask. I come in here every fucking day. I never wear one. Nobody fucking hassles me except this one guy down there. He's always nagging me about the fucking mask. I'm not going to wear it. There's no Walmart does not require it. And I'm like barking at this cop. And he's like taking a step back and like put his hand on his gun. And he's giving me that serious face. And so I kind of like took a breath. And I was like, look, okay, I apologize. I should not have gone off on that man like that. I'm just, I'm going to come in here. I'm going to get a few things and then we're going to leave. And he kind of just nods and is like, okay, you let me go on my way. Thank God. He was wearing a, he was wearing a uniform of a, of Crandall Police Department, which is not the city I'm in. So maybe he didn't have any jurisdiction to do anything or just didn't bother to, I mean, I didn't break the law. I just kind of yelled at the guy. But anyway, he was super passive. He didn't fuck with me. He let me go. So I should have seen an escalating, you know, I should have seen some escalating behavior right there. I, I, so I, I've been doing like, what, what you don't know if you're ever watching this video is that I went through over a year of anger management classes, marriage counseling. I went through some shit, okay? Trying to keep myself out of trouble, trying to become a better man. And just so you know, throwing things in the fucking house is strictly forbidden from my program, like, you know, I'm not going to bore you with all the details, but basically that kind of fucking behavior tends to lead to other behaviors, which end up with somebody getting slapped. And so, you know, damn. So we started with throwing shit and then I melted down on a guy at Walmart right in front of a cop. And there's been a lot of that this week, real sharp tongue with everybody like I can spot stupidity a mile away if you don't do something exactly the way I think you should do it if you don't think exactly the way I think you should think if I start a sentence and I feel like I've already made it clear what I'm talking about and you don't know what the fuck I'm going I get really triggered if you can't read my mind I get really fucking triggered if you're not exactly where the fuck I think you should be like if it's my wife I look upstairs on the fucking on the the bike I look down she's not at the fucking free weights I'm fucking freaking out. Where is she at? She fucking somebody in the bathroom. Like, it's just crazy thoughts. And it's not all day, every day. Don't get me wrong. The thing is, like, when people start, start, start talking about Trent, I feel like they paint this picture like it's just all day misery from the time you start to the time you finish. I have not had that experience. Okay? There are parts of the day that are relatively normal. I mean, admittedly, there is a fucking cloud over my life right now. I know it's there. I ignore it 90% of the time. I try to, um, you know, make the best of it a lot, but it's always like right there. You can just feel that, you know, like your kid walks up, you're triggered, you know, somebody makes too much noise in the house. You're pissed off. Like, you know, just stupid little shit, trip over something on the floor. You're ready to just smash shit up. Like, it's just always, it's, it's there, I guess, if I'm being honest, it's there a lot. And um, it's like I've gotten to the point where I'm congratulating myself for all the shit that I don't do. Because yesterday, I was at the fucking gym, and I'm doing, I, I'd been doing, uh, what was I doing? Uh, delts and triceps. And I'm laying on this fucking bench in front of the, the dumbbells trying to do skull crushers with an easy bar. These two punk ass kids walk up and they're at this bench next to me. And it's these motherfuckers who are going to come in here and they're going to stand there and literally talk for five minutes. I'm not exaggerating. Like they're going to stand there taking up a fucking bench, just talking loud as shit, acting like, you know, just punk ass kids, like 18, 19, I don't know how they are, 
acting like 18, 19 year old kids, talking loud, talking about life like they know what the fuck is going on, bragging, being just just, just being punk ass 19 year old kids. I don't go to the fucking gym to listen to that bullshit. You know, if you want to fucking chit chat, play little fucking grab ass games, go back to fucking high school and do that shit in that fucking gym or go in the fucking in the little uh, room where they have all the fucking bitch ass dance classes. Go in there and fucking act like an idiot. Don't stand right next to me while I'm trying to get work done and just be sitting here running your fucking mouth in my goddamn way. And so I'm trying to ignore these motherfuckers and I can just feel it. Like I can feel the anger coming on and the thoughts. Like I'm already in my head thinking of exactly what I'm going to say, what I'm going to do. And that's not unusual. Like that shit happens all the time. I'm always in the gym thinking what I would have said to somebody. But that's where the trend kicks in. Like I'm sitting here thinking about what to say and I can feel as if like a weight is on my ankle and it's just pulling me underwater like I'm losing my ability to reason and logic and and avoid conflict like I could have moved I wasn't even 90 percent of the time I wasn't even hearing them that's the fucked up part like I have really nice Sony WXM4 whatever fucking $400 noise canceling headphones like I wasn't even hearing these guys for 99 percent of their little faggot chit chat okay I went to talk to my wife, who was a couple of benches down. I muted my fucking noise canceling headphones, and then I could hear these fuckers, and it would just confirm for me what they'd been standing there doing, yammering. And when I walked back by them, I kind of just said, "Hey, why don't you go fucking talk somewhere else?" I thought that was gonna be the end of it. Like, <laughs> I'm pretty fucking big in the gym. I got veins bulging out everywhere. I look like I'm on fucking steroids, thankfully. And these are some kids that are not even fucking close to being my size. They look like they've never lifted weights a day in their life. Just bean poles. And one of these motherfuckers says, fuck you to me. Now, I couldn't tell which one it was because I had my headphones on. But I heard it. And I wheel on the fucking guy closest to me. And I'm in his grill. Like, he's standing sideways to me. And I'm talking in his ear. And... I don't even remember the shit that I said. What the fuck did you say to me or something? I'm yelling at this kid. And he's like, man, it, it wasn't me. <laughs> he's getting scared of shit. It wasn't me. And, you know, I didn't say it. And then his buddy's going to go confess and get his back. So his buddy perks up, this little fucking Asian kid, perks up and goes, it was me. I can't even fucking remember. It was like I, it was like I hovered across the gym. Next thing I know, I just teleported. I was on this fucking guy. Right in his face. I mean, my lips were almost touching his lips. And I don't even remember everything I said, but it was a whole lot of, do you ever fucking talk to me like that? I'll beat your fucking ass into the ground. This kind of shit. And this cocky little son of a bitch has got more balls than he's got brains. He's going to keep running his fucking mouth. And so he says, what are you going to do? Kiss me? And I mean, I was like millimeters from this guy's lips. <laughs> And so I, I'm trying to get a grip of myself and I said something like, fuck you, bitch, I'll beat your ass. And, and I went to turn to just walk away to let it die. As soon as I turn away from this fucking punk ass kid, he says some more smart ass shit. I don't even know what he fucking said, but he said something smart ass and that was it, man. I just spun on him and shoved his fucking ass to the ground. He was holding two dumbbells, like 20s or something in his hand. He stumbles off, you know, he... he he trips over the bench, falls on his ass, and he's picking himself up. And I see him reaching with this dumbbell. Like, this motherfucker's getting ready to hit me with this dumbbell. And so I clench up my fist, and I'm leaning toward, like, I'm ready to fucking just start pummeling his ass. Here comes my wife flying out of nowhere. <laughs> She's fucking screaming, what the fuck are you doing? What are you doing? She's trying to pull me away from this kid who's over here bumping his fucking gums. This dude must have been suicidal or something. Like, he wanted to fucking die this day. I don't know what the fuck was wrong with him. And so now I'm just fucking foaming at the mouth and panting. And she's dragged me around the other fucking bench. And we're just, like, squared off to, like, two dogs in the dog park. And I'm fucking eyeballing this guy. He's going to make these shitty-ass little fucking grins at me. So I'm fucking trying to get him to go outside. I'm calling him out. Come on, motherfucker. Let's go outside. You know? Right now. Let's go outside. We can work, we can work it out. We'll talk it out. And uh, he's just looking at me. She's standing there yelling at him. Just shut your fucking mouth. Just shut the fuck up. He's going to fucking kill you. <laughs> Some shit like that. I don't know. 
The whole fucking gym is looking. I've just shoved this guy on the fucking ground. It's just, it was an embarrassing fucking thing, really. Like, I should have been embarrassed. There was no fight here, okay? Like, I could have I could have beat both of their asses at the same time, and it wouldn't even be anything to brag about. Like, <laughs> these fucking guys were not big. But the fucking, for some not big motherfuckers, the one guy should have shut his fucking goddamn mouth. And, see, I'm getting fucking lit again just talking about this shit. Anyway, the point of this, this is dragging way longer than I planned. The point I'm trying to make is, in the last week, since I made the previous video, I have broken some shit in the house. I have uh, verbally assaulted a fucking a fucking guy who works at Walmart right in front of a cop. I have actually assaulted someone, technically, by the letter of the law. I, I mean, I shoved the kid on the ground. That was enough to get me fucking uh, picked up for a simple assault. I didn't punch him, but I did fucking put my hands on him. I wanted to punch his ass. Uh, I'm not sure what would have happened if my wife hadn't been there. Because that kid had a lot of fucking spunk. I think we would have had to go. I think he'd have got his fucking ass beat down and then I would be probably sitting in jail right now with the fucking trend running out of my system. My fucking nuts shriveled up. <laughs> so, yeah. That is three weeks deep on trend baloney nanthate. 200, I'm about 250 milligrams is what I'm running. I'm running with 500 milligrams of test E. I was running 30 milligrams a day of Anivar, and I fucking ran out. And my guy is taking his sweet ass fucking time getting me my order so I can get back on the Anivar and probably run it for another four weeks. Just too fucking long. Well, it's not too long. It's fucking Anivar. So it's not good, man. I've started having some night sweats. I've been cuddling the shit out of my wife at night, just like. I mean, I am like, this is, this is like beyond spooning. This is like if you tried to take two spoons and press them so tightly together that the heat of them rubbing up against each other would weld them, would weld them together. Like that's the kind of shit that's going on in this bed at night. Like I am literally spooned up with every like part of the front of my body my legs my feet is just like completely matching hers and then I'm like grabbing her and pulling her close to me and then just commencing to lay there and sweat all over her for fucking hours this has been going on for days it's getting ready to go down right now yeah this one's getting I'm about to get off this fucking camera I'm gonna roll over I'm gonna pull my penis out through my fucking little hole in my pants I have some shorts that have like a little flap where your dick goes. And then they have like a pouch for your fucking boys. If if somebody's actually watching this shit on YouTube because I was stupid enough to post it. You got to get you these David, David Archie underwear. These motherfuckers will save your life. Though, well, they won't save it, but they'll change it. Like if you're used to wearing tidy whities or boxers, you, you, you do not know what you're doing. Okay. If you don't have underwear with a pouch for your testicles and like a little... Like a little flap for your dick to go in to keep those motherfuckers separate so that you don't get the bat wings and your nuts are not, you know, sliding down between your fucking legs when you're driving in the car. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, David Archie, you got to look these fucking things up on Amazon. These things will change your life forever. You got to get those. So I pull my dick through the little flap. That way I can press it between her butt cheeks all night long. <laughs> this is how fucking close we are. So, yeah. So I'm about to... <laughs> I'm about to be baking her body in this bed uh, overnight. That's how it's going down. Uh, the good news is, the final thing I'm going to say is the trend fucking works, okay? Like, for all the negative shit people talk and the shit I've been talking, dude, I am putting weight on the fucking bar at the gym like, I mean, like it's not weight. Like, PR is just going up 50 pounds every five days. I mean, just like completely retarded broken kind of you not even just ridiculous just fucking absolutely ridiculous go in there one day and you hit a pr on a row machine for 400 times four just next four days later five days later same machine same setup though 50, 50 pounds extra get five i mean it's all day it's just like my, my lift log is just pr 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 just the whole fucking day pr so that shit is fucking addictive right there and the recomp 
Oh my God. I mean, I have gotten so peeled. You can't see it in this video, but my vein, yeah, you're not going to be able to see it in this video. I am so insanely vascular, paper fucking thin, massive recomp. I, I'm, I'm estimating that I recomped three pounds, maybe four pounds of muscle in four weeks. Well, it was a little bit longer than that because I started the end of our first. It's been like six weeks. I've been cutting for like six weeks and I feel confident I have recomped no less than four pounds of muscle. So when you take in consideration that I probably gained a solid six to seven, then recomped four, four more. Um, it's going to be good. I'll survive. All right, then. I can't think of anything else to say. You got anything I, I missed? No. I'll make another one next week if I'm still here. If I'm not here, then I fucking beat the shit out of somebody. And I'm in hell in fucking downtown Dallas. With some money on niggas' books. <laughs> So there you have it, man. Um, obviously, a quite a departure from the the first video. Um, you know, everything basically. You know, the, the trend has a funny way of uh, of really captivating your mind. Like, you know, I said in my very first video um, that I was I was genuinely scared to take the trend blown because I'd read so many negative things. And that it was the relationship killer, that it caused people to be physically violent toward, you know, people in public and co-workers, you know, like, I don't, I don't have the energy to reiterate everything you guys already know. You guys already know everything that the trend is known for. And uh, <coughs> um, I uh, was very scared to take the drug because I was afraid that um, I was going to have all of those effects and I was getting myself in trouble. And then here we are at the three, you know, start of the four week mark. And I have had 100% of the effects. I had, you know, had a fight with my wife that very easily could have resulted in, in something far worse happening. I'd gotten into a fight with a gym that if my wife again had not been there to break it up, probably would have, would have ended up with me going to, to jail and getting, getting charged. And, um, and you know, the confrontation at, at Walmart, I mean, I was just completely out of my fucking mind. Just, you know, I, every single thing that the trend was supposed to cause, it was in full-blown effect at week four. And you could see in my demeanor in the video that I clearly don't care. And you could see in my demeanor in all of the videos that I've shot since my first trend cycle that I still clearly don't care. And you know, maybe maybe I'm just sick right now and, and overly emotional, uh, but it is enlightening. Uh, it is somewhat eye-opening again to uh, to see that marked change in yourself and to uh, you know to recognize just how serious how serious the effects are. And you know, but the thing is, is like. You know, when I'm when I'm feeling sick like I am now, and I'm not feeling the trend in my system. You know, like I had, I, is, I'm on all. I, I didn't stop my cycle this whole time I've been sick. The only thing that I took out of my cycle is the Proviron. Um, I don't even know why I did that. I just I've been trying to limit everything that I have been having to do. My wife's been giving me my shots and and doling out all my meds and shit. So. Uh, basically, I guess I took the Proviron out because it's the one drug that doesn't fuck up something else. You know, if I lower the test or the trend or the mast, then it's going to fuck with my E2 or my pro prolactin. So I don't really have any choice but to stay on, uh, even though I know the, the gear is stressing my system when I'm already weakened. I don't really have any choice but to stay on or I'll just fuck my entire protocol up. So... You know, when, you, when you're looking at the effects that steroids can have on your life and you're not feeling the positives, it makes you kind of second guess, like, man, what the fuck am I doing to myself? Uh, but I know that the second that this bug is gone and all of the, 
the confidence and the aggression and the, the self-esteem and the strength and the you know the gains on the fucking scale start coming back and I get back in the gym then I will I will remember exactly why it is that um, I'm willing to accept these consequences or these potential consequences and why I have fought so hard to be able to always protect the cycle to always remember that you know the little shit that gets under your skin when you're on when you're on trend that makes you want to you know lose your mind and do something crazy it's just not worth it man the, the, the trend is so powerful and it builds such a phenomenal physique and you just have to protect the cycle you've got to learn to control it and not let it control you and I have been doing that for almost three years now um, I, I stay on year round at this point so there you have it, man. That's about all the energy I've got. I'm um, glad you guys have been enjoying these videos. And uh, we'll be getting back to some new content coming up pretty soon. So, as always, thank you for watching. And we'll see you on the next one.